Thank you, Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. My name is Randy Lewis. Uh, right. Good morning, folks. Um, I'm, I'm coming to you from the museum, from the up here in the Native American section, um, the Wenatchee section, the Viscosa section, uh, which is, you know, which is only right since what we're talking about is the Pascosa people. You know, we're we're coming to you in in this manner because as everyone knows, we're in a pandemic and in a basically in a quarantine, still in a semi-quarantine state. And so we're using we're trying to use universal precautions. By that I mean six feet to eight feet distancing. Uh, never forget these. Don't don't go home with don't leave home without them. And um, I love this. I love this section. This is where I work with kids a lot, and we tell our story here. And I try to impart to the to the young people of the Wenatchee Valley that we're still here. The Nipiscosa people, Wenatchee people, as you know us, we're still here. And that says a lot because at one time we were many. Now we're, we're getting there. We're getting back up there. Um, well, I want to open first with a, with a story. It's one of our creation stories. As part of it, we have this, we have this wonderful pantheon of characters, much like in uh, Greek mythology with all the gods. Well, Native Americans are not much different. We have a huge array of wonderful beings. Some of them are, most of them are still with us, like grizzly bear, Amstamel, hummingbird, uh, Black Bear, but probably one of the most key individuals within this group is coyote. Back during a period in which animals walked and talked like we do people, there was, um, how would you say it? There was a dictate or there was a command by the creator, Hoyan Choten, to make way for man who is coming. People were here, but they were so insignificant. This is shortly, it was right around the time of the great, the great glaciers that actually came right to just north of here, north and west of here. Wenatchee was not necessarily in the last glacier. We were right at the edge. And Dalhocht and Dalhocht and Kamhocht, where the winds come up against the glaciers. That's where our people were, because that's where all the animals were. But after the great flood, it left people, it left people without food because the great animals that you know as the, the golden age of mammals, the mastodons, the giant sloths, the cave bear, the saber tooth type, they were all wiped out liquefied in this great flood that was caused by the by the glaciers breaking this great ice dam broke and released waters that came down and essentially changed the face of the entire plateau area which we're a part of <clears throat> well comes word from Huayan Choten Huayan Choten the creator or you know the 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 great grandfather if you want a place in, you know, it's like trying to describe God. He's the, you know, he's the great mystery. He sends word through his mouthpiece. Coyote, Shmiao. Shmiao is the, he's the trickster. He's the changer. 
He's the one who delivers the laws. He's the mouthpiece for the creator. Well, Coyote is given this task. Let me back up. When animals were getting their names, Coyote, who always thought he was smarter than everybody, um, I think there's a great correlation between Coyote and men. Not man, but men. Has all the foibles and the downfalls plus some of the, you know, some of the great characteristics of Coyote. <clears throat> anyway, Coyote, who always thought of himself as smarter than everybody, he was going to arrive first and thus get the best name. Well, throughout the night, Coyote, he can't sleep. He cannot sleep. Coyote doesn't want to miss his chance, so I'm not going to fall asleep. He puts sticks in his eyes to keep his eyelids open so that he won't fall asleep and miss his chance. Well, come morning time, the sticks had, dis had dropped and Coyote is late and so he's scrambling. His scrambling in the sun is straight up, which means it's midday. Coyote arrives at the gathering and everybody's standing around and they're all talking and they're, you know, in their jointly understood language and they're going coyote you're late you're late <laughs> creators always already given out most of the names and coyote goes no no and yeah there's just uh there's just a couple names left and uh you and skunk are the last ones to get your names and coyote goes well <clears throat> the creator issues forth his his proclamation, you will be known as Coyote. Coyote, no, that's a mangy dog's name. Yeah. No, I want to be, I want his name. And he points, I'm Stemelt. Grizzly Bear, I'm, I can, I can be like Grizzly Bear. I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm smart. And he runs at Grizzly, Grizzly Bear says, no, you've got, you've already got your name. He runs at Grizzly Bear. It's Grizzly Bear and falls down. He's not as strong as he thought he was. Well, how about, how about his name? And he points at Mulkanops, the golden eagle. And the golden eagle says, you can't fly. I can, I can, watch. And Coyote takes off running and he leaps in the air and he flops his, his little arms, his little paws, thump. Oh no. And so he thinks, well, Maybe if I jump off from something. And so he finds this small, kind of a small bluff, and he runs as fast as he can and jumps in the air and he's flying. Not really. Thump, he hits the ground. This time he, he does damage to himself. Ah, oh, geez. Well, um, how, about, how about one of them? I can be one of them. And he's pointing at the, the sturgeons and, and the fish in the water. And he dives in the water and goes underwater and is swimming around. But then he has to come up for air and he almost drowns himself. He said, nope, you're out of luck. But with the name Coyote comes the powers. Coyote, Coyote has the, Coyote will have the link to the great creator, to Hoyan Choten. Coyote will have the ear for Hoyan Chutin. Bing! These big ears pop out. Oh, geez. And Coyote, you have a great nose and you can smell everything. It'll get you into trouble too. It may even get cost you your life. It may get you killed. But here's the thing. Your brother right here, Fox. Fox, if Fox steps over you once, twice, three times, four times, five times. He can reanimate you and bring you back to life. Hmm, Coyote's going, that's, that's not bad. That's not a bad idea at all. This, this may work out well. He's just in his mind hatching all these plans and all the trouble he can get into. And even though it may cost him his life, he won't actually die, not with the help of Fox, but he's got to keep Fox by his side. Well, one of the, as that day 
passed on, Coyote was given a series of tasks by the creator. The first task, one of the first tasks is to make way for man who is coming. And the animals go and, you know, Iha and we, Iha, Iha, Skint, Skint, Hoichint. He's talking about the people, Skint. Who are these people? Who are they? And the creator, through Coyote's mouth, says, People are the ones that you've overlooked. They're the two legged ones who walk and hide in the shadows and come out and steal food on occasions. And they live high up in the hills where no one can bother them, but they're starving. People are starving. Mankind is starving. Now, Coyote, it's up to you to feed them and to help them. And Coyote goes, well, I can do that. I can do that. So he goes to the animals. The animals have dispersed back to their to their homelands, to wherever they range, wherever they fly, wherever they swim. And so Coyote goes and he finds some of the animals. First one he finds is deer. And he says, deer, he comes upon them. Well, deer, they've heard, they've heard about this man who is coming. Actually, all of the animals have. They actually heard about it before Coyote did because Coyote is always the last one to hear anything. And the animals really aren't too sure whether they want to help this man who is coming. Why should we feed him? If he's so stupid and he's so puny and weak, why don't we just let him die? Hmm. <laughs> In retrospect, they probably have the right idea. <laughs> but Coyote says, nope, that's, this, is not a, this is not a bargainable issue. We've got to feed man, we've got to clothe man, we've got to shelter man. We have to show man how to live. Oh. So when he comes to deer, he doesn't realize it, but deer have already found out. And deer are preparing. They're preparing for man who is coming. But they plan to kill him. And they're, they're dancing. And they're dancing and they're singing their songs and they're sharpening their horns with other with other antlers they're sharpening their antlers and they're sharpening their hoofs and they're going to ambush man who is coming coyote catches him and says no he says you you can't do that and for your treachery for preparing to kill man who is coming I am going to make you food for man who is coming. I am going to, well, man who is coming, it will take great hunters to get you, to secure you, but he will use your horns and your bones for tools. He will wear your hides. He will eat your flesh. Now go. And all of a sudden, deer drops down on all fours. Before that, he was on two legs, just like you and I, and like the other two legged. And off he runs. Well, this doesn't solve the situation. Coyote has got to, hmm, Coyote has got to find somebody who is going to come forward to help man who is coming. Not one who's secretly trying to ambush and to how would you say, uh, upset this plan. So Coyote moves on and he goes from animal to animal all the way down. Bear is not interested. Bear has his own plans. Bear, but Coyote sees in Bear something that man who is coming will learn from you, Bear. Stamstamilt, Michal, Kalhoch. He says, Man who is coming will learn what medicines, what to eat when he is sick, what to eat in the springtime. You will be the teacher of man who is coming. So in that, in those two, first of all, we have the hides from the deer, which will become the lodges 
From bear, he will learn medicines, what to eat, what foods from the ground. Then he comes across beaver, Skolau. Skolau is so important. Skolau is, goes on his way. He's not interested in man who is coming. But Coyote says, man who is coming will use, will value your fur, will value your pelts. He will trade. Uh, what we call Skolau is what you call money. Skolau will be the great currency by which man who is coming will trade. He will value your fur so much, but he will learn. See what muskrat and beaver are, are doing is they're pulling the plants. Beaver is cutting down the small trees, building a dam, building a lodge. Man who is coming will learn how to build a lodge from you. And from muskrat, he will learn that the that the tulies and the cattails are wonderful building materials, bedding materials. So there will be lessons from you too. And from otter. Hmm. Otter likes to play a lot. So man will develop his playful nature. But otter also does something else. He, she exploits everything that swims, everything that crawls under the water. And man who is coming will learn how to fish and how to gather clams, crayfish, small things to eat. In times of hunger, in times of food shortage. But otter is no good to eat. None of those what we call muscoid weasel family are good to eat. They're valuable as far as their lessons that we learn from Fisher, from Badger, from Wolverine, Kolkmayan. Man will learn the powers of these animals. So as Coyote works his way down, he's, he does, he finds himself going into very, very, mm, how'd you say it, not foreign, but uh, different territories. He's now entered the Columbia Gorge and still no takers. Nobody wants to step forward. Coyote is with, uh, Fox is with Coyote and down they go. They go through the gorge. They confront other animals, other animal beings down below. They, they come across mountain goat. Mountain goat also was planning to, let's say ambush or surprise man who is coming and he's sharpening his horns and coyote tells him that only the greatest hunters you will you will live high in the mountains Shoyalto, that's the billy goat you will live high in the mountains and only the greatest hunters and the bravest will go to get you but they will use your fur and your fleece to weave blankets and to make clothing they will use your horns for spoons, for bows, for tips. So he tells Shoyalto to go, expect man who is coming. He finally finds himself at the mouth of the Columbia River. Mpatatu, we call it Mpatatu, the great water. And there, Huenhuenar, those that live on the shore, Coyote takes his, he, he always carries with him this walking stick. It's also a talking stick. And he uses it as a, much like a king uses his scepter as a station of power. He arrives at the water, at the ocean, and he slaps it. He summons forth all the animals. Chlap, chlap, chlap. All of a sudden, the the waters are teeming with animals coming forward. Animals like sea lions, killer whales, all of the life from the sea is coming forth. And Coyote issues forth his request and the creators dictate that we must make way for man who is coming, that we have to feed people. No takers, killer whales, he's, he's just not too sure. He goes, I am. Um, I eat people. 
I'm not interested in feeding them. Same way with shark. Hmm, they're good tasting. Finally, the, the waters are empty, no takers. All of a sudden there's a voice, I'll help, I'll help. Ija, Ija, Ija in cha, in King Salmon. King Salmon swims forward, takes his head out of the water and says, I will make, you know, I will feed my people who are the King Salmon, the dog salmon, the coho or silver salmon, and the sockeye salmon, and our cousin the steelhead. We'll feed man who is coming. But you have to make us a promise. Mm, Coyote goes, okay. What is, what is your request? And the salmon says, that we be allowed to go to the you know, to the rivers, to the streams, and lay our eggs and have our children, that we get to return every year in the place in which we give up our lives, the places where we die, spawn out or are captured. Coyote says, that's a, that's a fair request. And so they follow Coyote. They follow Coyote and he comes back and he comes back through the very areas. And one of the areas he comes to is the Cascade Rapids. And there on the mountains around Cascade Rapids down by Bonneville, the mountain goes, Shuyauto. Coyote says, I'm going to open these rivers so that people will have fish. But you must give me a little tribute first. And so Mountain Goat, Mountain Goat allows Coyote to take one of his daughters as one of Coyote's brides. They comes farther and he comes to the Dalles, the Dalles, the Dalles Falls at Salilo, where the Columbia River plunges over the cliffs. And there, Skolao, the great beaver, has built this humongous dam across the Columbia River and he prohibits the salmon from going any farther. And so Coyote, Coyote says, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm going to allow you the position of being Shkolao, the most prized of all the furs for man who is coming, but you have to let the salmon go through Ah, uh, the beavers kind of, yeah. and beavers were giant. They were giant animals. Coyote listens to him whine about it. Finally, Coyote just slops it, and brings down the dam. And from that day forward, he makes beaver a small animal, not the great animal he was. And matter of fact, Coyote says, because of what you, you know, your reluctance to help, man who is coming will prize your tail. And Indian people love the beaver tail. They roast it. It's one of the great delicacies in our world. Matter of fact, all, a lot of these animals are great delicacies in our world. Stuff that um, you might cringe at the thought of us eating, but we eat them. That's our world. <laughs> so Coyote comes up and he comes up to the Snake River. He breaks the dams on the Snake River that the beaver has built there, allowing the fish a third of the salmon to go up the Snake River. He comes up, he actually comes up to the, to the Wenatchee here at the confluence. And part of the way up, I would say about eight miles up the Wenatchee River, he comes across a dam. This one is not built by beaver. It's built by three sisters, three witches. There was Loon, one we call Shag. The other one is Mud Hen. And they guard that. They guard that dam. They don't let anybody come or go up across that. So Coyote, he makes him a, he makes a request and tells him that he has to make way for man who is coming when you take this dam down. And unequivocally, no, 
No, get out of here, you mangy dog. Hmm, Coyote goes, they're... To deal with one of them, to deal with one woman is a headache. To deal with three that have power, that's the problem. Hmm. So he goes back and he sits there, he puts on his little thinking hat. And Fox says, maybe you've, maybe you've gone too far. Maybe this is as far as the salmon. Coyote says, no, there's, there are people who are up here, the Lake Wenatchee, and they have to eat these little tiny fish. And they're not doing well, they're not thriving. We have to bring them fish. About that time, he hears a voice, Hamishamish, the dove, morning dove, and mole. They sit there every day and they watch those sisters and they know the routine every day. The sisters come out and they bring reeds, they bring tulies, and they bring sticks to shore up their dam. Every day they re they're replacing and restoring their dam. But come midday, they go up the river. They go up the river to dig and to find food for themselves. And they tell Coyote that. <clears throat> ah, Coyote goes, I know what I'll do. So Coyote, Coyote goes up river. The three sisters have come back. Coyote goes up river and he has the help of Mole and he has the help of Morning Dove. And they gather the materials. Coyote has them gathering bulrushes and sedges and little sticks and feathers from Hamishamish. She flies and she brings him feathers. He makes this little cradle you know the story of Moses. Most people do. Well, Coyote builds this little, like a little boat made out of reeds. Snaps, snaps his paw, <laughs> his toes, and turns into this baby. Fox puts him in the, in, the, in the little cradle and pushes him out. Oh, he goes down the rapids and he arrives at the dam. <sighs> the three sisters, they're just, they're beside themselves. They're getting something. Something has come their way that they've never thought they would have. A child. A child. Oh my, look at this. We'll, we'll raise him. We'll keep him. We'll raise it. And Shag, the cormorant, goes, hmm, this doesn't look good. Nah, let's just kill it. Let's drown it. No, no, no. No, Loon says no. And so they take the child and every day they spend time, each one of them cradling and feeding Coyote. Coyote's getting kind of tired of this, but Coyote's already got it. He'll let them put down their guard. Finally, Coyote, I mean the Loon sister says, we've got to go. We're running out of food. I'm getting thin. Mud Hen is going and I'm tired of all this stuff that's here. Okay, but He's, he weighs a lot. How are we going to take him up the river? And from the shore, there's a voice that comes. We'll look after him. It's Hamishamish, the dove, the morning dove, promising to look after him. We can, we can pick up stuff and feed him. And, okay, so they do. They entrust, they entrust Mole and morning dove to watch their baby. Up the river they go like that, Coyote transforms back into Coyote. He breaks up in the dam, allowing the salmon to move through. Just thousands and thousands and thousands of salmon are moving through. The sisters are up river and all of a sudden they see these salmon coming through. What's happening? Where are they coming from? The salmon are literally boiling out of the water and they can hear people. They can hear the animals celebrating. They hear the bear celebrating. All of the animals that will live off from salmon also, they're celebrating. Oh, the sisters are mad. They come scooting down the river. And Coyote is standing there. Coyote is standing there with his club and he tells them, you had your chance. And the great king salmon is sitting there with him. And the king salmon are beckoning, calling, singing for people to come and, and enjoy this, this wonderful feast of, of them. And if you look there at the Pashastan Pinnacles, you've been up there, haven't you? 
and you see their heads with their mouths open. The salmon are giving, teaching people to sing. That's where people found their voice. People had no voice before. Salmon gives them voice and gives them song. And from that, from that song, we remember, we as Pascosa people, we as the, the animals from this area, we remember that song, those songs. And every year we come together with the first salmon, the arrival of the first salmon. Back up, we still have to deal with those sisters. Coyote slaps a, his stick down and he tells Loon, Loon, and he touches Loon, you will wear this necklace. And if you look at Loon, it's got a necklace that's made out of dentillium around your neck. Just to remember what happened here today. Mud Hen and Shag. Shag, hmm, you were a problem. You wanted to kill me. He said, come here. And he grabs Shag's long, beautiful beak and twists it down. So it's got this little hook. You'll never be able to impale anybody or hurt anybody with this beak again, except for little fish. Little, hmm, what you call scrap fish. And Mud Hen, I'm sorry, you were no help at all. So you don't get to enjoy all these fish. Matter of fact, all you get to enjoy is mud. Mud and little plants, the, what we call loch, loch is the slime at the bottom of, <laughs> of the pond. So go. And so the birds, they drift off in their shame. In the meantime, the people, the people have gathered and Coyote, Coyote issue, issues forth a command that from this point on, we will acknowledge salmon as our first food. It's our first, what would you call animal food, protein to come. And you will celebrate this. You will have a great meal. You will have great feasts in which you sing the songs for salmon. But when you catch the first salmon, you do not break its bones. You keep its bones. You just take the flesh off. And from the first salmon, each person at the feast gets one bite. It's just a symbol of our thanks. And then you take the bones and you lay the bones, the body of the salmon on a bed of cedar, on a, on a plank of wood, and you bring it back down to the water and you release it and its spirit back into the water to show respect for this fish. And you will do this forever. Coyote goes, his job here is done. The Peshastan pinnacles are created. He has broken the dam at Rock Island to allow the fish to come through. These are all part of his tasks to free salmon. There were areas like Shalan, the Billy Coach, Huyato. They were greedy. They wouldn't share with Coyote. They would not give him tribute and honor him. So he blocked it with his stick. He brought the cliffs down. Now there's this gigantic series of waterfalls that prohibit the salmon. Matter of fact, the people up there, the animals and the people up there, the only thing that they will get are these kikoni, these small, weak looking sockeyes that are landlocked. And on up all the way to the headwaters of the Columbia, he goes, giving people, bringing people fish. And that's how we got our salmon. And that's the story of how Coyote brought the salmon. Story number one, <laughs> to be continued. Please join us as Randy shares the moving and sacred blessing of water and salmon live on Zoom at 3 p.m. on October 17th. Register at WenatcheeValleyMuseum.org.